Greetings fellow men, servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again and today I want to talk about virtue signaling backfiring. So you all might have heard the phrase or uh, the reaction when politicians want to uh, take in refugees or migrants that people then say why don't those politicians and all that are in favor of that, why don't they host these migrants then in their own houses? Well, in this case, people didn't go quite that far, but it goes into that general direction. So the case I'm talking about is from the state of Hessen, Hess. So this uh, initiative of refugee helpers there, they signed some declaration of obligation or commitment that they would pay for the cost of having these refugees in Germany. And they thought it would be round about 1,000 euros per month. And uh, they were under the impression, and I don't believe them for a second, that the government of Hess actually agreed to that. But they were under the impression that this would only have to be paid until the asylum process is over. So now um, these um, asylum seekers or whatever... They are here, but uh, they are on welfare, of course. Yeah, of course, they don't speak German, they don't have any skills, they cannot operate in this society. Of course, the taxpayer has to pay for their food and for their housing, for their medical care, whatever. And, um, of course, the people who signed um, this declaration, they have to pay for that still. And now they feel mistreated. So these people are now suing, actually, uh, the state of Hessen to get their money back. Yeah? <laughs> so they actually thought that they can virtue signal for 12,000 euros because maybe they don't have kids and they don't know what else to do with their money or they're just useful idiots. But they thought they can invest these 12,000 euros and then dump the cost of these new guests that we have here on the rest of us. So they didn't consider, of course, that when you sign one of those declarations, in any other case, you are responsible for the cost. Um, when I went to study in the US, for example, uh, my family also had to sign such a declaration that if any costs should arise to the American government or to the school or whatsoever, that uh, my family would have to pay the costs then. And um, also, when you uh, work abroad, when you go to live in another country, it, many times someone has to vouch for you. And <laughs> believe me, states and governments, they take this seriously. Yeah? And in this case also, um, when these people have now been granted asylum in Germany, but they become welfare cases, obviously, after that, of course, these people who signed this declaration have to pay, not the taxpayer. So... They really thought that they can virtue signal uh, for a bit and then the rest of us have to pay for their um, instruments of virtue signaling, basically. And I do not think at all that this is another case of no good deed goes unpunished. No, I think they tried to do a selfish thing, a very bad thing, and uh, it just turned out to be more costly than they had anticipated. So even though these people, uh, these new guests, have been granted asylum in Germany now. They are still living off the German taxpayer and as the state of Hess is in the possession of a declaration of obligation by these refugee helpers, obviously they are taking that money from the people who signed those documents, from said refugee helpers. So I think you should never underestimate the thirst for money uh, that a democracy has or a state yeah, that wants to fulfill all sorts of wishes uh, to the electorate and uh, who um, actually um, makes a lot of promises and wants to buy voters, so to speak. Uh, you should never underestimate how thirsty for money they are. So I think it is curious that this case went public now in Germany and that people are starting to see, hey, this actually costs money. Yeah? And there were people who are just like human traffickers, you know, who have an interest in bringing these people into Germany and uh, to flood Europe with foreigners. So that there are people among us who would actually take their 
their own money, so to speak, as a starting investment uh, on making Germany more diverse. So they are apparently true believers. Well, maybe they were not such hardcore believers that they are willing to pay for more than 12 months. But it seems as if they will have to. So I really don't know who these people are, but uh, this is really just um, guessing from my part right now. But I can imagine that they work for the government, they're probably teachers or work somewhere in the administration, a nice cushy office job, and uh, they never worked in the free market or in the industry one single day of their lives. So the money that they're giving is taxpayers' money anyway, and... Uh, They are probably also the kind of people who think that it is somehow racist if you want to have your own kids instead of just adopting someone from Africa, right? So I would not be surprised at all if these people are actually under the belief that uh, Germany must be made multicultural, that uh, white Germans should not be allowed to survive in Germany and that Uh, people from all other areas of the planet should have a right to live in Germany, but not the indigenous Germans. So this goes actually beyond pathological altruism. This is actually self-hatred or some kind of auto-racism. So this is another bit of curious news that might not make it into the international media or news cycle. This is what is going on here at the moment. Huh? The state and refugee helpers or concerned citizens fighting over who has to pay the cost, actually. Quite interesting, I think. Enjoy the rest of your day. Servus, Kameraden.